Hello, hello developers and welcome to API Flow YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to connect a MySQL server to Flutterflow and use data from Microsoft SQL Server into your Flutterflow apps. We will use API Flow as connection uh, service and we will build very simple app with uh, like micro crm with list of customers we will show name phone and company and uh, we will have some button like call button so what we i need to do first i need to create a new project in api flow this platform allow you to connect different data sources and connect microsoft sql server as well so we will create a new project select microsoft sql server to connect and next what we need to do we need to create new microsoft sql server connection so for microsoft sql server connection you need to have server address or ip i will use um, microsoft azure hosted sql server but you can self-host it only uh, main uh, thing you need to have is a public access to your database it's server address or ip address or dynamic dns address attached to your uh, sql server so i will fill all this data and we'll create a new connection so as you can see i specified uh, my server address uh, server port uh, I use default uh, MySQL server port. I use uh, login of user created in uh, MySQL server and password. Uh, now I save and we'll see a list of the databases available in MySQL server instance. So I have here two databases, API Flow, DB, and AdventureWorks. In this demo, I will show you how to use AdventureWorks database. It's sample database provided by Microsoft. I use AdventureWorks Lite. And we have some tables here, as you can see. You can select which tables you want to allow to provide access to API flow. And you can disable different operations if you do not need them. For example, we can disable all more data modification operations or enable them back. So I will publish my project. And next, what I need to do, I need to download open API definition. I downloaded my open API definition. And now I can go to Flutterfall API calls and import open api definition i just created here okay so we have here our all our operations to assess two different tables in microsoft sql server database and last what i need to do to complete this connection i need to copy authorization header from api flow and add it to flutter flow now we can save it and next what i will do i will show how to query uh, this data so we go to test response and test and send test api call as you can see we receive data from our microsoft sql server table and we have customer data here we will put this customer data into our very simple list you can filter this data you can order this data so to filter data you need to specify query like this for example we want to search uh, all who uh, have first name name like Janet and now we can and we have all all whose name uh, contains Janet as you can see 
different different persons, but only with this filter. So we have this ability to filter our data, to order our data, offset and limit uh, amount of return results. So what next we need to do? We will create create a data type for our customer. For our customer, we will map data of our customers to data type to use it with uh, Flutter components and Flutter flow. So what we want to have, we want to have like first name, last name, uh, company name and phone and maybe customer ID. I will use these fields to create a new data type. Okay, data type and we will name it customer and field customer ID, it's integer field, first name. last name and we want to see a phone of our customer so we create a string field for phone here we go and last what we want to do with our data mapping for this object is to parse it as data type customer is a list and save these changes. So now operation list sales LT customer will map our will map data to our data type. Next, what we will uh, do, we will go to our page, to our page, and here we will create a state uh, for our data. A page for uh, uh, we will create a state for our data to be able to uh, store uh, our, our returned customers that we return from backend query. We also can directly connect uh, server query to uh, our, our clone, but I propose you to query uh, to use uh, page variables and then attach uh, data to your list because this will have better performance and uh, it depends from case to case because sometimes you want to dynamically load data and sometimes it's better to use page state variables. So in this case I will use page state vari variable, I will call it customers uh, and we'll use data type, data type uh, is list, type customer, confirm. And now on page load, on page load, we want to do a lot of data from Microsoft SQL Server. Also, if you have multiple queries to uh, backend API, to API calls, you can use a parallel action, or if you have only one, you can use add action, just, just one call. I will use just one call, and I will use uh, API call, uh, list customer. I do not want any variables here and I will call it API customers. So if my query is successful, let's set our page variable, set field customers, set value from result of our API customers, as data type. So we will update our page from the return data and this will render our list when we will attach this state to this list. So what next we will do? We have a column here 
a clump here and inside we have a roses container so we will attach dynamic shield generation to that column and we'll use data that this returned from uh, our query to uh, SQL Server. So we will use page state customers, no changes, confirm. And now we will specify it as customers. Very important. Save it. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have pre generated like preview of uh, these containers, and now we will map individual components. So I want to map these text to customers with like a data structure field. Uh, okay, I need a text composition, so let's change it to a combined text. And first part of text will be uh, first name. Data structure field first name, confirm. Then I want to add white space, and then I want to add last name. Data structure field last name. Okay, confirm. Great. And here we have a phone, customer list item data structure field phone and i forgot to create company so let's return to sometimes happens let's return to data types and add company field here as string create back to our page and map company data structure field to company Okay, confirm, and now we can test how it works, how it will query our database, our Microsoft SQL Server database, and map data to that component, to that list of our panels. So now we have our uh, customers rendered here. The only thing that I don't see company here. So I, uh, uh, okay, as I see it's company name field. So what I will change, I will go here and will delete that field and create company name. Sometimes it's happen, you can make mistakes. Okay, and we need to map it here, data structure field. Name, confirm, and you can do instant reload here. Take a moment to rebuild, and we'll render our application. It takes some time to query our data, so as you can see, we have all customers list here with names, phones, and companies. So all our data from SQL Server is returned. If you want, you can modify query. For example, uh, you can order your customers by name and do filtering through API call and etc. etc. I hope this video will be helpful. Uh, I will continue to create videos about how to use Microsoft SQL Server data this waterfall so follow our channel and uh, let's let's explore more options how you can use data from different data sources with waterfall to make your application more powerful thank you for watching and have a nice day